Alrighty guys, welcome back to another LEGO set review from Rick by Brick, and today we have a set number 75225, this is the Elite Praetorian Guard Battle Pack, containing 109 pieces and retailing for $14.99 in the United States. This set contains four minifigures, and was released in January of 2019, I believe, right? And, uh, you know, it was a pretty cool looking battle pack, especially because it provided a cheap way to get these Praetorian Guards, uh, you know, after the Snoke's Throne Room set was pretty expensive, and there is a list of other sets that were released at the same time. The other battle pack that came out alongside these was the Inferno Squad one, and there is a little bit of an ad for the other sets that came out this wave. And here we have the full build all assembled here for this battle pack, and I actually kind of like this a lot. I do have two figures that don't attach to it, but just looking at the build itself, it's really a display stand for multiple of the figures. And you have these two turntables here, which you can use to kind of turn them back and forth and make the Praetorian Guards fight each other. And that's kind of a cool, simple little play feature for a set like this. And, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I like it. Uh, in addition to that, there's not too much going on. Um, we do have these two jumper plates here on the back that allow you to place this weapon stand, which this weapon stand is perfectly fine. It has clips that will allow you to hold all of the weapons. And in addition to having those clips, uh, they also suggest that you can do this uh, to store the Stormtroopers blaster. Um, but, you know, that just is what it is. Nothing crazy, special, or groundbreaking and you can just stick this on the jumper tile there and the other thing that you have included here it's actually supposed to be like that you actually get this droid thing which um, I guess they could train with this droid that has a lightsaber um, maybe it'll help them to train in lightsaber defense you can turn the arms up and down uh, well, one arm and one blaster and you know it's fine, it's on a transparent stand, and you can just sit it right there. Uh, it does sort of kind of get in the way of the play feature if you leave it here while, you know, attacking back and forth. But other than that, it looks cool, and, you know, nice to get a bonus little droid in the set. And before we look at the guards, who are obviously going to be the star of the set, uh, let's just look at this First Order Stormtrooper. This does use the thinner, uh, like black line section on the helmet, which was, you know, designed for The Last Jedi. They just kind of rebooted the original design. And, you know, it's a good-looking figure. I've always liked the design of these LEGO First Order Stormtroopers. He does use a angry clone face, and he does have a stud shooter, which, if you don't know how that works, you just push down on that, and it'll shoot off a stud, and you'll lose it. And, you know, they do include a couple of extra studs in this set uh, as well, uh, so that you can uh, be able to replace this if you shoot it off and it goes missing. So we'll start off with this one of the Praetorian Guards, and you get two different helmet designs in the set. This is the helmet design that was introduced in the Snoke Throne Room set. That set featured two figures with the same helmet mold, um, so you know, there's no variation in that set. But the weapon here is just this little, I don't know, almost double-sided dagger. And the torso print is the same as the Snoke's Throne Room uh, variant, but the legs are a brand new exclusive design. They're used uh, the same legs for all three guards in the set, and same torsos as well. Uh, but the legs are new because the ones in the Snoke's Throne Room had the dress slope piece that was printed up especially. Uh, I don't mind the fact that these ones have legs because it allows you to pose them a little bit better. Uh, there is no head print for any of the figures in the set, so I'm not going to bother removing the helmets on the other ones, really. Uh, but they do have the shoulder pads, which were again introduced in Snoke's Throne Room, and that helmet, which is a cool shape and was also introduced in Snoke's Throne Room. It's got just a good amount of molded detail in it, no printing at all, but it looks really, really good, and I'm very happy with the way this figure turned out. But I do think that this is the less impressive design of Praetorian Guard. Because personally, at least, I like this helmet design better. This is the one that they used for the Elite Praetorian Guard uh, construction figure. And I don't know, I just thought that that was really cool. Again, torso and legs are the same, so I'm not going to bother messing with that. But this helmet design, I don't know, I just, I just find this more visually interesting. It looks more impressive. It has the same ridge detail on the front, um, which is really cool. And same detail on the back, but just the overall shaping is different and nice. It does have this longer weapon which allows him to 
you know, actually fight. And while we're right here, I'm just going to take a look at the other weapon, which is included on the weapon stand. And it basically is this little uh, chain weapon, which allows you to, you know, kind of fight your enemies a little differently. One of the ones in the movie does use a weapon somewhat similar to this. At least it does have the chain. I don't think it had the other thing at the other end. And the last one is the same figure that we just looked at, except this one is a different weapon that just uses a machete piece at the end of the weapon instead of one of these Nexonite swords. So overall, I think this was a really successful battle pack. I like These figures are some of the best Star Wars figures of recent years, in my opinion at least. Uh, it's, it's just a really, really nice batch of stuff that you get here. I think the build is good for what it is. Like, it's different for a battle pack, but I think that's a good different. Um, you know, this creates a nice little display, and is it, I would say it's a good way to just display these figures. If you don't own Snoke's throne room, I think it would be cooler to just throw them all in there, but I don't own that. Uh, but I didn't want to miss out on this, because it is due to be retired at the end of this year. So I grabbed it, and I'm happy I did. Um, you know, I, I do think that this guy's a little bit out of place, but he's a good figure too. And you know, I am not unhappy to get one of him. I'm just uh, you know have a couple extra first order stormtroopers, and yeah, I mean, this might this is probably my top five Star Wars battle packs that have ever been released. But there have been a couple of really good ones recently, so. I don't know. We'll see if that changes over time, but I'm definitely glad that I did not miss out on this. I think $15 is perfectly reasonable for these four figures and this build, which actually I think in this case adds value. So hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. I'll see you guys all next time. Bye everyone.